Hey guys, welcome to Rents to Drive. We're back with my favorite crawler of all time, the LCG TRX4 with trailing arm suspension mod on the back. So what you need is two trailing arms and two suspension option adders, these little, uh, what do you call them, suspension mount, shock mount thingy-majiggies. Uh, neither of these is the most awesome product that was ever invented, but they worked out very nicely for this particular uh, situation. The arms, I do not know what they're from. They are 120 millimeter, which I think is the same as the stock TRX4, if I remember correctly, from when I built this, which was a couple of months ago. And the wheelbase is 313 millimeters plus or minus uh, a hair. I th which I think is right, if I recall correct. So the 120 millimeter links, uh, the downside to these metal, uh, these metal trailing arms, uh, when you buy them typically, is that the ball ends are a little on the loose side, and these are no exception. Now I rolled the dice quite a few years back because they were dirt cheap on Amazon. I wasn't even sure what they were for, but they were such a good price that I figured at some point I would have a use for them, and I have. I've run them on a couple of things along the way, and they've held up okay so far. This is by far the most taxing uh, use I've had for them. And uh, so far so good. The suspension does work pretty nicely. These little adapter jobbies are mediocre at best. Um, I think if I recall correctly, there was only really one way to get them to line up with the holes on the, on, on the, on the LCG chassis rails. Um, and get them attached, and I just used a couple of uh, M3, I think, bolts with uh, plastic uh, nuts on the back. Same shocks I was running before, the Enjora Mountain shocks, I believe they're 110. Oh, they're 100. So they're the Enjora 100 millimeter mountain shocks, and you do get a nice uh, range of travel with this mod because the shocks are now way back here, which, let, which means they... Uh, the amount that they move moves the back axle more, right? Geometry 101. And it does indeed seem to help quite a bit uh, in terms of eating up the bumpus of the terrainus. Right, so installation is easy. You move the link to the outside of the, uh, the mounting position where the shock is normally mounted. You mount it to the outside of the chassis rail, and you essentially get trailing arms. Now, this is a little bit um, sketchy because you've got a cantilevered member hanging off a bolt, which is not ideal. Ideally, you'd want some support on the outside and some support on the outside underneath, the, uh, underneath where the arm goes so that it's a little bit stronger. So obviously, that is something for another day, something worth doing. Uh, for now, I'm going to run it the way it is because I'm not super, super abusive uh, on this truck. I'm pretty sure it'll be okay uh, the way I tend to run it. Everything else, I think, is the same. Enjora 3600 kV motor, Hobbywing 10 BL120 ESC. Not the perfect ESC, but it works pretty well in this application. Uh, for me, the biggest thing about this truck is I like the wheel speed with the brushless setup because there's a lot of dirt where I run. And in dirt, going up hills and stuff, you need wheel speed. That is, without a doubt, the most important thing. Because if you don't have wheel speed, you pretty much get stuck on a whim if the hill is steep enough. So this 3600 kV unit works pretty well. Uh, it's got the two-speed Traxxas transmission, so you can kick it down into low gear for crawling, and you can kick it up into high gear for bombing through the dirt, which I quite like. There's a little bit of cogging when you're in high gear at low speed, like starting up, but if you kick it into low gear, that pretty much goes away, so it crawls very, very nicely. Uh, let's see, the transmission's holding up perfectly, as you would expect from a Traxxas transmission, this uh, cheap Chinese servo. No problems, shifting like a champ all day today, running for about an hour. What else? Uh, oh, the back end is the Enjora uh, gear reduction spool. So the back end wheels or tires are turning slower than the front tires, which gives you better cornering. I've been running that, uh, I ran it uh, from the start of last year 
and basically one run so far this year that's the first time I had it out I've had zero problems I have seen people complain about those gears being not durable uh, mine are tip-top I'm running the the uh, the uh, Traxxas solid spool I've had zero problems I've been I don't know fairly hard on it I've bombed around in the dirt uh, done a lot of high-speed driving and stuff which you think would be pretty hard on those gears if it was going to uh, uh, you know take a toll and uh, so far zero problems um, I'm running locked so this cable is just for show at the moment on the back um, I like a back locked up I hardly ever unlock it I like the front to have the selector and this does uh, that way if you're doing some crawling you can lock up the front end if you're doing some driving you can unlock the front end and it corners better and it's definitely uh, pretty sweet in my humble opinion as I mentioned this is my favorite crawler uh, by a mile uh, it's to me this is exactly what I want and uh, the trailing arm suspension has improved it slightly I would say the side hill driving is uh, is slightly better it eats up the bumps I would say better now so a uh, little more suspension travel a little more cushy on the back end of the truck it uh, it goes over bumps uh, very very nicely at high speed which is kind of what I like in it. Uh, I really like this uh, power wagon body. It's been quite durable. No complaints. It's a Chinese cheapo. You can actually get them really cheap uh, these days. I saw them on sale for under $30 Canadian, including shipping, uh, which is a pretty darn good deal. I paid, I think, $35, which was not a bad deal at the time. So they've actually come down. And the 3D printed back half, windshield wipers, mirrors, which are the only thing I've broken off, headlight buckets, bumper are all on my thingiverse I'll try to remember to stick a link in below I've got a file with or a whatever a project on thingiverse with a bunch of nuts and washers and miscellaneous shit in case you have zero CAD skills um, I use plastic washers for all kinds of stuff and I find them to be super handy this back half is printed out of TPU I have broken zero the back half has been super durable. This truck has rolled over many, many times at this point, and I have broken nothing. The overall look of it, I'd say, is pretty good. Uh, there's some plastic welding on it because uh, this is my prototype. Uh, there's different versions of it on my Thingiverse with uh, different lengths and whatnot. Uh, so you can pretty much do whatever you want. It's not super hard to mod. Like I said, I was running it on 2S, which I think is pretty much the... Uh, the sweet spot in terms of durability all around uh, I don't know usefulness it's not insanely fast on 2s on 3s which I ran it quite a bit last year it's really really fast and you know I'm talking crawler fast not go fast car fast but it's got to be minimum 20 miles an hour on 3s I would say faster than that and it's obviously easy to roll it easy to you know launch it into the air blah 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 I don't know this setup for a whopping uh, what's what do I have into it uh, 25 bucks for the Enjora 3600 kV motor 60 bucks Canadian for the hobby winged 10 BL 120 ESC what's that a whopping 85 bucks pretty cheap um, is it the perfect setup no it could crawl better for sure I really like it though uh, because what I do mostly is uh, is not super uh, technical crawling one note that I would pass on, and I've, I've mentioned this many times, but I'll mention it again. If you don't like wrenching on things, you like driving, you don't like wrenching, the, uh, the Hobbywing Fusion is definitely a good way to go because then you go with something like a TRX4 Sport setup, you eliminate all the, you eliminate the locking and unlocking diffs, you eliminate the two-speed transmission, you just run the Fusion uh, ESC, uh, and motor combo and I you know go with whichever KV version gives you the wheel speed that you want and typically you can also tweak that with gearing so if you get the low the low KV one you can you can uh, put in a bigger gear if you decide you want more speed if you want to drive it you don't want to have to work on stuff like I said TRX4 Sport much simpler no T-locks no uh, no transmission or no multi-speed transmission and you can run something like the Hobbywing Fusion, which everybody seems to love. The control of that thing is pretty, pretty awesome. So 
I would have a hard time imagining that uh, the people that don't want to work on stuff are going to be disappointed. Is there anything else? Oh, I'm running a, I think I'm running a different set of uh, wheels and tires. I've run these many times. Uh, these are a little bit, uh, these are about 110 millimeter. I think I had bigger wheels and tires on this last time. Um, actually, and I did notice today that I had absolutely zero heat issues and I did not yet have a fan on the uh, motor. And the temperature was about 20 degrees outside, so maybe it's just the smaller uh, tires that got me there, because these wheels are pretty heavy. I'll have to have to do some investigating, because heat is definitely something I've had to watch out for with this when I'm running a lot of speed. Uh, the motors tend to get a little bit warm. Uh, typically, when it's cooler out, I don't run the fan, and then when it's uh, when it gets a little warmer, I put the fan on the motor and uh, cool her down a little bit. The ESC has zero issues with heat. Uh, where I live, it rarely gets above 30. Um, you know, over 20 is a luxury. Uh, cool weather is super, super common, so you know, heat's not my biggest problem. If you live someplace hotter, I would expect that potentially you're having more of a heat issue. Definitely, when you're setting one of these things up, you want to pay attention and uh, make sure that you adjust your gearing, adjust your cooling, make sure that you're not uh, cooking parts because cooking cooking drivetrain, the motor and the ESC is just a waste of money. Yeah, there you go. So the big update is the trailing arm mod uh, for what I invested in it, which is probably about 16 bucks. Totally worth it. If you're looking at 20, 30, 40 bucks, uh, it might not be worth it. This thing drove really well with the LCG chassis links and uh, suspension. Uh, this just basically gives it a little more travel, and I mean, I would say it's an improvement. Probably not a night and day improvement. It uh, it drove well before, so um, if you're looking for parts and you can't find a deal, everything seems expensive, because I've seen these uh, these uh, shock mount uh, adjusters for like 20 bucks. I've seen trailing arms for like 20 bucks for a pair. That's kind of pricey. I don't really think this mod's worth 40 bucks. At least, I, I don't think it would be to me. Uh, you'll have to obviously use your own judgment. Uh, at some point, I'll probably post some running videos. Uh, it's a little bit hard to compare without actually swapping out the suspension, trying the old setup, and then swapping this back in and trying the new setup to be 100% sure if it's much, much better. And like I said, I hadn't run it since last year, so quite a bit of time in between. But my impression is that it is indeed better. And I was running in the same train that I was running last year. It seems to eat the bumps better. It's, it side hills a little bit better. It seems to handle very, very slightly better. Um, you can still roll it over quite easily, but that's to be expected. Um, oh, I was going to mention, I haven't seen a good deal on a uh, sway bar for this particular bad boy. I have one kicking around, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get it to work on this. Um, I don't know what it is. Sway bar setups are, tend to be fairly pricey. And uh, I guess, I don't know, to me, the value is, is somewhat dubious past a certain point, right? I mean, to me, somewhere in the $20 range is probably reasonable, but uh, yeah, they're a little tricky to find in that price range. And I'm not sure. I have not seen one, I don't think, for a TRX4. I'm going to have to look again because that's one thing I, that would be kind of nice is a rear sway bar on this would help uh, help keep it from tipping over as easily as it does. So... That's it for this edition of Wrench to Drive, where we ask the eternal question, do you drive to wrench or do you wrench to drive? See you next time.